Hello and welcome to another little podcast uh, from me, Mikey Campling. I haven't done one of these for a while. Um, I just really wanted to um, record something today just to pay tribute to Sir Terry Pratchett, who we've just heard today has died um, from his Alzheimer's at the age of 66, which is, is very sad news to lots of people around the world and that's that's a testament to the effect that he's had on people's lives through his uh, his wonderful books and his public speaking and tv and film and all kinds of ways um and in recent years i it's hard to know how much translates to the states and things but certainly in this country when when he announced that he had his alzheimer's many years ago he was he, that was seen as very unusual. Um, it was kind of brushed under the carpet quite a lot and often referred to as dementia, which is is not strictly accurate, I don't believe. Um, so he was very brave in coming forward and raised the profile of the disease and, and raised the profile of fundraising for research um, and so on. I believe he gave generous donations as well uh, to that cause. Um, and it really, I would say, a lot of credit goes to him for um, making that a topic that people, making Alzheimer's now a topic that people will discuss more openly. And I think it, he uh, led a lot of calls for um, improvements in care for people with Alzheimer's. And um, I think that was just very valuable in itself, just raising the level of that debate and awareness, of course, huge, huge uh, effect on awareness, being a very public figure at that time. Um, And he was also very open, very honest about it. And I think that was also a measure of the man as well. Um, I think he was um, a very what you see is what you get type person. Um, And I think that came across as very genuine. And... I think that helped as well. He also raised the debate about um, assisted dying and, and whatever you know you think about that. I won't go into that now, but I think it was a debate that needed raising in a much more intelligent way than it had been in the past. And certainly that was something that, that Sir Terry was able to do. Um, I thought I'd mention something. I I always feel a bit dubious about people who seem to be cashing in on you know some connection with a celebrity, however minor. So... I mean, I put in in all my profiles that I've had lunch with with Sir Terry Pratchett a couple of times, and that's true, albeit a long time ago. Um, and that's not because I'm trying to cash in on it so much as it shows you what an effect um, that had on me um, meeting him. It was, it was a, a a great thing, and and it seems like it was yesterday to me, although it must be more than twenty years ago, I'm sure. Which is, um, so I used to live in Cheltenham, and. Uh, I think this video is jumping. So I used to live in Cheltenham here in the UK and there's a big uh, literature festival in Cheltenham, a really good one, um, still going on. And some friends of mine, um, their families were involved in helping out at the festival and in return for stewarding and so on around the events, they would get um, sort of first dibs on on free tickets that were left over to events. and. Um, getting to meet authors and and putting them up as well, Um, you know, having them round to the house for lunch, which is kind of nice for a visiting author far from home to go and have a nice family lunch rather than sort of be stuck in some grotty hotel on their own. I think that's how it works anyway. So I was lucky enough to go along. I was in my 20s then and we'd recently discovered what a great laugh uh, uh, Terry Pratchett books were. And we used to, um, because there were quite a few of them even then, although... Well, I say quite a few, there's probably five or six, um, not now, there were 70. Um, and we used to sort of pass them around, read, you know, lend them to each other and, and enjoy the jokes. Um, and I went, we went along to one of his talks first and it gives you an idea that he wasn't even in the main room. That's that's my memory. He was in one of the side halls and I'm not sure if it was even full. Um, me and my friend sat at the back and had a good old laugh, um, which... He gave a, a, a genuinely funny little talk. I remember him saying a line, I think it's been quoted um, since, that somebody asked him what he felt about this sort of Anne McCaffrey style of uh, thing, with fantasy, which was quite popular at the time. And he said something about the uh, the cute dragon that sits on your shoulder uh, also craps all down your back. And that you know, got a good laugh from us in the audience. 
because he was then seen really as a fantasy writer. And I think that probably a lot of people now would realise that he was a unique phenomenon in, in himself and that he was blending fiction and fantasy and satire and all kinds of things in, in a really uniquely imaginative way and very effectively. Um, he was entertaining people and challenging them whilst having good fun with them at the same time. So he did so much uh, to open things up. But at the time he was regarded as a fantasy author and I think some of the audience, who were perhaps diehard fantasy geeks, were kind of thinking, who are these guys laughing their heads off at the back? And we were there because we just loved his sense of humour. Um, and if you know, we got a few sort of r r furrowed brows and very English way of sort of, oh, what are they laughing at about there sort of thing. Um, but uh, it was great. And then we had lunch with him afterwards. And um, he was just as warm and generous and, and funny in in person when he wasn't you know on the stage reading or performing he was um i remember the the lady giving the lunch hosting the lunch asked him if, if he ate meat and he said he would uh, eat anything he could keep down two times out of three which i think might be in one of his books somewhere but you know he said it with a twinkle in his eye and uh, that was how he was he had a twinkle in his eye and he kept us entertained um I was rather in awe of him because I'd always wanted to write, but I thought, I can't say that because if you're a writer, everywhere you go, people must say, oh, I want to write. I'm full of ideas, you know. So I didn't say anything. I didn't even ask him for a uh, signed, to sign any of his books. I just thought, just interact with him as a, as a person, you know, just nicely. We'd listen to his stories. And he was very considerate and asked about, you know, our jobs and what we did and things. And I was a computer programmer at the time. So uh, Terry Pratchett told us about his his difficulties of uh, his first tour in America, I think it possibly was, where he'd had some awful hire car which kept breaking down and difficulties they had with that. And he would just be spinning off ideas. He, um, in those days, he used to see this phenomenon of super... Before they started locking supermarket trolleys together, you'd see them abandoned all over the place. And I remember him sort of um, coming up with some idea about about them being almost alive and sort of sneaking off on their own and gathering up in the woods sort of thing. Um, just things like that just came came spinning off him because he was a sparky guy. Um, and back then, just dressed totally normally in sort of uh, Marks and Spencer, kind of, you know, one of the mill crimpling trousers sort of thing. He, he hadn't become that famous. A few years later, uh, we did the same thing. And of course, we you know, we're desperate to go along and meet him again. And we, we were lucky enough to to make him lunch that day. And we, we had a nice lunch together. And um, again, very entertaining. But by then he'd uh, gained a bit of fame. And at this point he, he was more in his public image role. So he was sort of dressed in black with a floppy hat on, which uh, later became a trademark. So today I've made sure I've worn my hat in, in tribute to, to Sir Terry. Um, so I think um, there's not much else that I want to say other than um, he wasn't just a, a great writer, um, but a great guy as well. And he did an awful lot. Um, certainly some of his books for younger readers, you know, the, the Johnny and the Bomb and that sort of thing, and, and Only You Can Save Mankind. Um, uh, actually, and truckers, diggers, wings, things like that, which when I was later in life, I was a primary school teacher and I used to use those with, with classes. And you'd often find you get particularly some boys who maybe weren't so keen readers would be really keen to gobble up some of those Terry Pratchett books because they liked his, his wicked sense of humour. And I think that brought a lot of people into a really good reading habit. And um, because he wrote so much, he was so prolific, there was always something to go on to. So... I think very much, you know, like Roald Dahl, a really good influence on on getting kids to write, uh, sorry, to read, perhaps to write as well. Who knows? Um, so I think I will um, sign off there. I will raise my, my mug of old grey in, in tribute to Sir Terry Pratchett and um, uh, may he rest in peace. And uh, thank you for all the things you've done for literature and for me and uh, you've enlivened a lot of people's lives and it, it's very sad 
that he should have been been taken too young and to been struck down by that that dreadful disease. Um, perhaps if we we want to take something from it, perhaps we could all go out and make some donations to charities that uh, help to care for people with Alzheimer's and their families because it, uh, caring for someone with Alzheimer's is is not an easy thing and there's charities there that help support people and let's keep that debate going let's make sure it isn't swept under the carpet or regarded wrongly as just a disease of the very elderly um, because it can strike people with early onset um, Alzheimer's uh, like it did with Sir Terry and uh, you know perhaps we can fund research and, and go on and, and try and, and make a difference as, as some kind of small tribute to the um, to the man for all that he's done for us in entertaining us all these years. So here's to Sir Terry. And I will uh, I'll finish there. Thank you for listening and watching.